Hi, welcome to Write More Light. My name is Sarah from the Midwest Writing Center, and I am here today to talk with you, dear, sweet, invisible audience, about reading local. Um, how these videos usually go, um, I introduce the topic, I talk about the topic, I tell you updates about the Midwest Writing Center, and then we have a writing prompt. Uh, depending on time and how much battery my computer has, um, I will be doing that prompt on camera. I like to do that prompt on camera with you. It's a little awkward, um, but I think it shows accountability. Um, I think it gives us both time to do the prompt for real rather than saying, hey, I'll get to it later um, because here we are in the moment doing the thing. All right, that's what we're gonna do today. So the, um, uh, the, the catalyst for my wanting to do a video on reading local is that um, I've noticed there's sort of a weird stigma in, in the world um, where we hear the word local and we hear amateur or something to that effect. Um, I recently learned, God, I might totally be wrong now that I'm saying it, um, that the word amateur just means untrained. Uh, I thought like amateur versus professional was like a professional gets paid to do the thing. Um, and well, there's a, there's a lot of arguments to be made about the difference in art between amateur and, and professional. Um, but, um, my point is when we talk about, um, local artists, something in our brain says, if it were good, it would be famous or national or something. And that's not the case. Um, but also with art in particular, music, visual art, dance, theater, um, obviously writing, but I, I, I hate to exclude other art forms, um, other medias, and I know other media, uh, and I know that I am. There's just so many arts out there in the world. Um, but there's something in our brain that thinks that if we use the word local, then it it's not as good as it could be without that, without that um, prefix. Now that's not the case. And maybe we know that intellectually and don't believe it emotionally. Maybe, um, you know, maybe we think that, uh, <laughs> Uh, I am so Iowan sometimes. Um, the only, the only local band I can think of, I try to be very like Quad Cityan or very, uh, you know, I like to think about Illinois, but like at the end of the day, I'm from Iowa. So Iowa comes to mind first. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, but it's not like anybody is going to say, oh, Slipknot isn't a local band. Cause like we know Slipknot's from Iowa, right? Um, I, don't know how to discern quality in uh, most forms of art, but nobody's gonna say Slipknot's not local, right? Just because they're touring the world or whatever. Um, so there's an example. Um, okay, Ashton Kutcher, right? Nobody's gonna be like, well, Ashton Kutcher and Elijah Wood, those local actors, they're also Iowan. Um, but Illinois is cheating. Illinois has like cities. <laughs> Everyone's from Illinois. That's why I have to go to Iowa. Um, apologies. I'm a little off track. Um, point is all of these, all of these Iowans I've just mentioned are big and famous and local. Um, so that's what I've been thinking about. One of my goals always, um, started a few years ago was to read local, read more local. Um, I also have, you know, other reading goals that involve like genres that I'm not familiar with or countries I'm not familiar with. Like I, I, I wanna read in translation because I don't, um, but one of them is to read local. So I have, um, well, I have a lot of privilege in this, in this regard. Um, I have something on my, I don't know how many of you out there use um, use the internet to track your reading, um, but I have a category or a shelf on my, um, well, I use Story Storygraph. Um, 
And I have a section that I call local small world because I'm so, so privileged to know so many writers and to have lived in the two US, um, the two American US um, UNESCO cities of literature. Um, I lived in both of them for a good amount of time, right? Um, so that's Iowa City was the first and then Seattle just got that designation recently. Um, and I've lived in, I'm trying to navigate a website and talk to you, I apologize. <laughs> um, I, I've lived in both of these places. So like local to Iowa City, <laughs> it's a big thing. Um, and local to Seattle, you know, if I'm, if I'm here in the Quad Cities and I'm like, oh, the Seattle writer, like that's not local. Um, and therefore, some, for some reason, sounds um, bigger, which it's not. Um, I mean, bigger in, in like stature and importance. Uh, uh, there we go. I found it. I found my local small world section and I will screen share in just a moment. Um, but when I say small world too, um, I mean that this author is either local to a place where I live. Uh, <laughs> um, I am, I'm thinking about that now. And I'm like, well, I've also lived in Chicago. And so, um, or they are a friend or they are a friend of a friend. So the bubble doesn't go out past that, right? It has to be one degree of separation or smaller. Um, but by virtue of knowing a lot of writers, that, that's a big circle for me. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I quite enjoy Storygraph. I can't really tell you much about it. I'm pretty new to it, but it is the uh, website I use now to track my reading. So here's my local small world. And you can see there's 30 books here. Is this? Nope, not doing that. Um, so the, this is in uh, that backwards chronological order. So the most recent book first. Um, Misty Urban, who I give like five stars to, um, lives in Muscatine. <laughs> That's local AF. Um, this one I kind of cheated with. I don't think that it was fair for me to, to count this, but um, the author of this book, which again, five stars, it was so good. Um, wow, this looks crazy. I never give anything five stars, just if you want to know what kind of snob I am. Uh, a friend does know this person, but like, I didn't know that when I picked up the book, so I should probably take that label off. Uh, we heard it when we were young. Chui Renteria is from West Liberty, Iowa, uh, and currently lives in Iowa City, Iowa. So, local. Um, Alyssa Washuda, this whole book takes place in Seattle. She lived in Seattle. Um, Ponty by Charlene Tao. Um, so she is, I, I've met her um, and she lived in Iowa City very briefly, but is um, from Singapore. So it's the small world thing that matters a bit. Here, I'm just saying, if you want to, um, if you want to have that, that broader horizon, I think it kind of helps mentally get yourself out of the, the little bit of stigma. Uh, Lauren Haldeman lives in Iowa City. Uh, Shane McRae, I know people who know Shane McRae, one of which is um, Ryan Collins at the Midwest Writing Center. Uh, Becca Claver wrote this book in Cedar Rapids, I think. She lived in Iowa City. I'm totally full of it. She lived in Iowa City. Um, and I and I know her. We have worked together because I lived in Iowa City. Um, Tara Hardy, Seattle. Um, Joe Mino was a professor of mine. Um, Erin Casey, I hope to have her on the show sometime soon. This is a really, really fun book um, and totally unexpected. It was one of those things where I wanted to read people I know. Um, and I only know her a little bit. We've met several times, but we don't like have a relationship. Um, and it's a genre I'm not familiar with. It was fantasy. Um, Liz Lenz, of course, does lots of work with the Midwest Writing Center, lives in Cedar Rapids. 
Um, Mark Rahe, I think that's his last name, um, lives in Iowa City. Uh, Marcus Wicker, again, Ryan knows him. I've met him only once, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> um, this one's great. Uh, degree of mastery. This was my boss at Barnes and Noble. And she obviously, she lives in Iowa City. I guess you don't know that. Um, and wrote, this is a, a memoir of craft uh, on bookmaking. Um, Samuel Green was a professor of mine in Seattle. Uh, Christopher Paul teaches at the university I went to in Seattle. Um, Kiki Petrosito went to the Iowa Writers Workshop. Uh, Ryan Collins, we know him. So um, I'm just gonna keep scrolling without listing all of these now. Um, point is, when you um, broaden, broaden that from local to small world, for me in my own brain, um, that really helped me to, there's no reason Alexander G should be in this. <laughs> I don't know anyone who knows him. Um, oh, he went to the University of Iowa. That might be what it is. Um, it, it helped me take away some of that stigma. So um, let's stop screen sharing. Um, that last one you saw on screen, Trouble the Water, uh, Derek Austin taught at the Collins Writers Conference. So there's a lot of that too, um, which is exciting because we get a lot of really great people through to teach at the conference. And then you can be like, hey, I know that guy. Um, and then you can change them in your brain from big, fancy, important person to small world. Um, so with that in mind, I want to give big props to people who work at bookstores, people who work in libraries. Um, and I can say with absolute certainty, um, you when you go into a bookstore and you ask the bookseller for recommendations, I mean, first they're gonna ask you what you're into, but they're, I've worked in, in multiple bookstores and I, can, and I can say this with, with absolute certainty, everyone there is as excited about books as I am. Um, so they're going to be really excited. And if you, um, any bookstore, I mean, chain or local, um, I can say this about Barnes and Noble. I can say this about the Artsy Bookworm in Rock Island. Um, they have local sections. You just, they have local sections. <laughs> um, you know, if you're at the Barnes and Noble in Iowa City, there's gonna be a lot of like really big names because the University of Iowa churns out um, really famous writers. But, you know, here in the Quad Cities, you go to the local bookstore. Oh, also um, the Book Rack huge local section at the book rack, huge local section at the artsy bookworm. Um, you ask them, you ask the bookseller, like, what's your favorite book in the local section? And they're going to, they're going to gush about it. It's people who work with books, love books. Um, and that's honestly like one of the coolest things about bookstores. I can't say for sure that like when I go into a clothing store, the person's going to be thrilled out of their mind to talk about clothes. Um, I'm sure that's true of a lot of clothing sellers, but um, it's always true of, of booksellers. And of course the library, those people went to a bajillion years of college to talk with you about, about books or research or whatever it is that you're there at the library for. So there's also definitely uh, a local section at your local library. You'll probably have to ask about it, but they're gonna be excited to talk to you about it. Uh, I know that for you in the Quad Cities, 100%, uh, because I work with those librarians sometimes and I give them local books <laughs> um, and programming. And you know they're gonna tell you when you're gonna have the opportunity to meet these authors. It's awesome. That's why people who work with books are the best. I'm sure this is also true of um, all the other arts, but this is the one I'm familiar with. So if you're looking for recommendations or you want like proof that it's good enough or whatever, um, talk to the booksellers, talk to the librarians, uh, talk to me. Like I, like I said, I don't give out five stars uh, easily. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not easy to come by for me. Um, 
I am backing up into this weird position um, because I've got a lot of local books behind me here, but I made a stack already off screen in this direction. <laughs> um, so the point two, I mean, if you're looking for more reasons to read local, um, you're serving your community when you read local. Um, probably, I mean, potentially economically by buying, by buying local. Um, buying from a local author puts money in a local pocket. But just by reading for free from the library or because they've got, you know, a 99 cent ebook or whatever the case, um, you're strengthening your community, you're getting to know your community, and you're, you're engaging with, with the local arts, which makes you part of that community. Um, even if you don't see yourself as a writer, which I'm sure you do, because stories are in all of us, and you're watching this video. So, <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, determining, you know, what local means to you, I suppose, matters. Um, I, I have already said um, local and small world are, are easier for me to, to wrap my head around for a few reasons. Uh, one, it makes me feel special. Oh, that's cool. Um, but another is it keeps the circle a little broader. Now I could decide to only read local this year and not run out of, uh, not run out of literature even if I made the, that local, see if I go to an hour, then, we're, then we have Iowa City in that circle. Um, but there's so much great, and, and Galesburg and Monmouth. Uh, <laughs> see, there's so much great stuff happening so close that it doesn't even matter where the circle is. Um, but yeah, if I only went to the book rack or the artsy bookworm, and only bought from those local sections, uh, I wouldn't run out. I would not run out of literature to read. Um, so that's really cool. And if you're looking to try and discern like, I, I don't know how to, there's no counting for taste, right? Um, so like whatever the, the quality of the book is, I. I would have a hard time saying like anything about tiers of quality, um, but I don't know what you're into. Uh, for example, I told you I'd never read fantasy before properly um, as an adult. Properly sounds really weird. Uh, <laughs> I, but you know, I've definitely read like Percy Jackson. Um, so when I was like, well, I wanna read local and I wanna read genres I haven't read. Oh yeah, I know of this woman, Erin Casey who writes fantasy and lives at the time a couple miles from me um so I just went in blindly and luckily it was dope um it was a really really fresh story I don't have that book near me for some reason um but if you're like you know I want to read something that I'm comfortable with I want to read the genre that I like you know, tell the librarian or tell the, um, tell the bookseller, they're not going to steer you wrong. They're not going to be like, here's a bad book, read it, bye. Um, hit me up. I'm an option. Um, I'm also not going to steer you wrong. <laughs> um, there's also like several um, local presses. And if you you know, venture just slightly outside the Quad Cities, lots of local literary magazines. Uh, there's only two literary magazines not attached to a university here in the Quad Cities, if I am recalling correctly. Um, universities are great too. Like they're putting out literature because students are engaging um, and students are writing and students wanna be published. It's all, it's all wonderful. Um, but that's just, the advice is to ask advice, I guess, um, if you're nervous about picking up a bad book. That said, I can't say I have read like really bad literature here locally. Um, I do, I, I, am, I am discerning. Um, there are plenty of books that I, 
have literally thrown across the room when I finished them because I felt they were a waste of my time. Uh, so I'm, I'm, none of those have been local. None of those have been local authors. Um, but I'm also saying, you know, you got to decide the parameters of local for yourself. Um, for me, it's pretty vague, right? But it's, is there a physical connection to this author? Physical meaning location, geographical physical location, um, or have we had coffee with the same person? Or have we had coffee at the same coffee shop? Um, so with, you know, what Chicago authors I, I count, yes, the answer is yes. We've had coffee at the same coffee shop um, or we've had coffee with the same person. Um, I was, I'm also very, very privileged to have worked with a lot of international writers. So um, it's gonna be easier for me to read translation because I already have a reference point. Um, and I've had coffee with those people or uh, I've had coffee in the same with someone who's had coffee with this, none of this, no, you get it. Um, so now I'm just gonna, I've got a huge stack of books next to me and I'm just gonna go through them and talk about them. I was a little worried that I wasn't doing enough um, poetry and now the stack is like mostly poetry. Um, I love that, I love how that happens. Um, and these are all Midwestern local, I think think if they're not I'm just gonna not show you um because I'm assuming that you following the Midwest Writing Center are in the Midwest uh like I said I've lived in other cities and so I'm I count those as local a lot of the time too um so this person I read this book I reviewed this book um the author how do I cover up the cover uh teaches somewhere teaches at Mount Mercy and lives in Iowa City. So I read this book. Um, and then later, this person doesn't know that they've met me, but we met in a class. And I was like, wait, is that her? Um, Remaking Achilles, Slicing into Angola's History. So if you've read like, uh, Angola is a prison and it had a huge prison protest in, um, that's what this book is about, the prison protest. Um, but if you've read, how the word is passed. So that was a really big book that came out in 2021 about black history in America, uh, in the United States. And, um, so you're, you're a little bit familiar with Angola from that, um, because the, the author tours the Angola prison. Um, this is so in depth, so specific to, this is poetry, by the way, here, let me, poetry, um, very thin book. Um, but it goes so in depth, so beautifully into this, this prison protest. Um, there's a lot of, there's some found poetry in here. There's a lot of direct quotes from documentation or from prisoners, um, protesters. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I wrote a review of it. You can find online. Um, so beautiful. And yeah, good one. Um, Kiki Petrosino with illustrations by Lauren Haldeman, Black Genealogy. Um, this is poetry, poetry, also very thin. Um, the, there's a couple of comics, right? Because it's got illustrations. There we go. Um, Kiki Petrosino went to the University of Iowa. Lauren Haldeman works at the University of Iowa. Um, and it's about Black genealogy. Um, it's about looking into your own genealogy as a Black American. Um, Mark Rahe, I think, is from Cedar Rapids or Iowa City. Um, trying to find the author bio. Um, folks who reviewed this book on the back are Kiki Petrosino and Shane McRae, who are both in my small world list. Um, I don't know either of those people personally, but uh, I do know that they are really cool from having read them. Uh, Rescue Press, I don't think is local. I was looking for that too, um, but I see this press a lot. Oh, it is. 
<laughs> Rescue Press, Chicago, Cleveland, Iowa City. So there you go. Um, so there's a press that you can follow. Um, of course, there's also um, University of Iowa Press. There is um, I keep wanting to say Fifth Wheel Press, and that is not local, uh, but it is the press that's in my name. Of course, there's MWC Press. Most universities have some kind of imprint. Um, I'll do that. I'll do that sometime. I'll talk about, because I'm not prepared to talk about local presses, but that is a good one to watch. Um, Beth Roberts, um, a member of the Midwest Writing Center, someone we love very much. Um, she had been, I was reading her bio on the back of this book and it tripped me up because it didn't say what I thought it would say. Um, she'd been working at Augustana and just moved away recently, but um, this is from Fence Books, which is a big, big, wonderful national press and not local, not a local press, local author. Um, it's poetry, it's gorgeous. She's so talented. Um, Becca Claver, like I said, uh, wrote many of her books living in Iowa City. She just moves away. Um, again, poetry. Um, she just moved away to Chicago to teach there, but we still count it because she's local in our hearts. Uh, this woman is from Nebraska, To Keep From Undressing by Aisha Sharif. A really, really beautiful book of poetry. Ah just hit myself in the face. Uh, a lot of it's about being Muslim. A lot of it's about falling in love. Uh, a lot of it's about, well, when I say being Muslim, I mean being Muslim in the U.S. Um, a lot of it's about interpersonal relationships. Just really beautiful book. And it's got an orchid on the cover. This next book is one that we use a lot in, in teaching at the Writing Center. Um, I say we, it's really Ryan. Um, but it, 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 it happened here locally. Um, it includes local and international authors. Um, it was printed at Trinity University Press, but um, I can say at least four of these people have lived in Iowa. Um, Seven Poets, Four Days, One Book. Um, that's a really cool project um, featuring I can't pronounce all of these names, but a lot of really famous poets. <laughs> and um, they worked off of each other's work. Very good book. Um, I get to have this next author on the show in February. Very, very excited because I really loved his book. Um, Chuya Renteria, we heard it when we were young. This is a memoir about growing up Latino in West Liberty, small town Iowa. Really gorgeous, really gorgeous writing. Uh, really good story, like all kinds of, of both you know, universality and also like you're, you're learning a lot about a different world, just no matter who you are. Um, so that's really, really special. These are pieces of paper, not that. These were written local in this house. Uh, of course, Anyone would be remiss not to mention Shishuan Collins, Flowing Water, Falling Flowers. Of course, that is from MWC Press. It's a novel. It's gorgeous. Highly recommend. Plus, Shishuan rocks. You can buy that at mwcqc.org slash books. My winks are really bad. Uh, another local press slash local author who we have met on this show. We've met Shishuan too. You've met Shishuan if you watch this show. There's a cat behind the computer. Forgive me, friends. This is fool. Hi, fool. Um, that's his name. I'm not being rude. I also did not name him. Everybody. Um, the next up one we have has been on this show. Um, it's published by a local press, Legacy Book Press, and is living, I want to say, in Davenport. Um, but we just had her on last week. So extra exciting. Elaine Olson, also a memoir um, on, on grief. Really beautiful. You heard me talk about how much it made me cry if you watched last week. Hey, buddy. Um, next one, Muscatine writer, Misty Urban. This is short stories. She has two or three books of short stories, a novel, um, some academic work. I think this book, I think one of the pieces in here was um, nominated for a push cart. 
I'm reading the back, but it's just blurbs. Uh, <laughs> um, Misty is just amazing. So read her. She's also a really cool person. She's been on the show too. See how lucky I am? Um, this is someone who I'm not going to be able to get on the show because he doesn't have a webcam. Um, cats are fun. Highly recommend. Hi, buddy. Um, Tom McKay, uh, such a talented writer, such a talented speaker, just a gifted storyteller, great sense of humor, like all around awesome dude. This book is called The Old Guard. He has like six novels, I think. Um, maybe four novels and two books of short stories, um, but just awesome dude, awesome writing. Stories I would never be able to come up with, which I mean, most of these are, but uh, <laughs> but that's, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but that's also something special. You know, there are plenty of stories I could come up with. Um, here's a fun one. Uh, this gentleman lived in, the Quad Cities for a long time. He was born in Wisconsin, I think, and now lives in Oakland, California. But um, his his press is called Rocktown Press from Rock Island. Um, he's been on the show once. He's going to be on the show again in February. Um, and I'm really excited about it because the last one I let him and Ryan jam for the, uh, for the session. And this time I'm going to ask all of my very focused, serious questions. Um, Brian Kranz, he has three novels, I believe. Freeze Tag on the Highway is only one of them. I have the two others, but this is the coolest cover if you ask me. Um, so I like his author picture. Um, really, really beautiful writing. Um, I recommend it to people who like to read like Palinuk. Um, there's a little bit of like, oh, the world is messed up, but also like a lot of hope, which is great. Um, the next one is me. <laughs> um, I am one of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in this book. Um, that seems like too few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven people in this book. So I'm not the only reason to read it. Um, it was printed by the Iowa Writers House out of Iowa City. Obviously, I am in the Quad Cities, um, but it's stories from all over Iowa about being multicultural, called We the Interwoven. Um, the story is told in, there are three volumes of We the Interwoven, and the story is told in here are really, really beautiful and really special. And um, I think the special thing about talking about how difficult identity can be is that you realize everyone has, has some struggles with their identity. Um, of course, I may be saying that because I'm part of that narrative, right? Um, about having more than one cultural identity. So these all particularly hit me, um, but the writing in here is gorgeous. Um, I say that being humbled to be to be alongside the, these writers. Um, Chewie Renseria was in one of these volumes, not, not this one, um, but just an example of, of me being honest about how humbled I am. Um, Here's a few books from the Midwest Writing Center Press, chat book by Sharice Pollard, um, The Atlas, volume 16, and The Upside Down, <laughs> These Interesting Times. Um, all of, um, well, for the chat book series, of course, you have to be in the um, seventh state Midwest region, but for these two, you know, everyone in these is from the Quad Cities. And well, that's not true. Two of our interns last year were not from the Quad Cities, but they were local nonetheless to the Midwest. Um, everyone in this book is from the Quad Cities and you've heard me talk about it a lot. So I will not belabor the point any longer. I just received this book today from an Ambrose professor. I'm super excited about it. I haven't read it at all. I have read his poetry, which is dope and is featured in these interesting times. It's Shakespeare's Political Imagination, The Historicism of Setting by Philip Goldfarb Sturt. He will be on the show next month. I'm very excited about that. Uh, hopefully I can read his book before then. Um, but I have clearly quite a stack to get through. Uh, in the meantime, I say clearly, but you haven't seen the stack. You don't know. Um, obviously, Brian Collins. 
poetry. Um, this book is out of print. Um, hopefully it will be back in print very soon so that everyone can have a copy, but you should read it. Just like look up Ryan. He's published widely. He's really talented. He is not here, so I can say that. Uh, if he were here, he would not allow me to say it and I would be a little bashful, but um, that's another thing. I know a lot of these people and how cool is that? How weird is that? Um, you could too by joining the Midwest Writing Center. Uh, this next one I haven't read, um, but I grabbed it because I think it's really cool and special that the author is from Waterloo, Iowa. Um, and it's heavy, my goodness. Um, it's, uh, it's really famous right now. It just came out and people are excited about it. So yeah, the creator of this book is from Iowa. Her name is Nicole Hannah Jones. Uh, this one, this is a local press. Yes, it is. Um, I wasn't remembering the name of it. Uh, Paradisiac Publishing is run by, is run locally by Lauren Alexis Wood. And this is Scary Stories to Laugh at in the Dark. She's very funny. Um, she's also featured in the these interesting times. I'm now thinking I have another book I'm featured in from Paradisiac. And for some reason, it's not on my shelf, which must be why I didn't grab it. Maybe I lent it out. Well, you're not here to watch me look through my books. So, well, that's exactly what we're doing, but I'm not gonna keep looking and you're not gonna watch. Uh, <laughs> uh, the next one, super big famous name, but just, I like to grab the super big famous names to be like, hey, this is local too. Kurt Vonnegut, Slaughterhouse-Five, written in, well, maybe Indiana, but he definitely lived in Iowa, lived in Iowa City, wrote in Iowa City. Um, so it counts, like if you're in Iowa City and you're looking at a local bookshelf uh, or a local section, Kurt Vonnegut's on it. And it feels kind of weird to be like, but, which is my point about how local doesn't mean sub subpar. Um, Someone, I don't have any of his books, so I maybe shouldn't have admitted that. Like Max Allen Collins is from the Quad Cities. Muscatine, I think. Um, he wrote, <laughs> watch me be wrong. Um, Well, I, I was gonna say Road to Perdition. I'm really afraid that I'm wrong now. Um, he's very famous, whatever the case. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, he wrote Road to Perdition. I know what I was talking about. Um, he's from here is the point. Um, next one, yeah, okay. So I'm getting a little bit now into the Iowa Writers Workshop grads, Alexia Arthurs. This book is amazing. She like really understands short form. Uh, the Cougarette, romance writer out of Iowa City, Eliza David. Um, that's another one where I was like, I want to read local and I want to read a new genre. And I um, I poked Aaron Casey, um, that fantasy writer I referred to earlier. And I was like, here are the genres I want to read. Who do you know? And she gave me Eliza David. And this one, another Iowa Writers Workshop grad who is um, well known and published now real life, Brandon Taylor. Um, who are your favorite local writers? Uh, I should check the comments to see if anyone's hanging out with me at all. No one is. Um, I mean, thank you for the three of you who are here, but no comments. Um, <laughs> um, who are your favorite local writers? Like what, what stands in your way of reading local? Um, what, what am I missing? I wanna hear, I wanna hear it all. Okay, that's that's my content. You heard me babble a bit. Um, we had a good time, hopefully. And now it's time for me to tell you what's up at the Midwest Writing Center. Um, 
we are of course continuing to do our writer studio workshop group that is open to anyone it happens in a private zoom meeting um so you just have to get the link it's not um it's not a private private zoom meeting you just it's open to the public um it's a, a really generous workshop group where we uh, make sure that we're critiquing to the things that you know the writer needs rather than um to our own tastes and um, that happens the first and third saturday of every month we are back to doing quint city poets that too is in a private zoom meeting on the first wednesday of every month um of course we're going to keep doing right more light every tuesday and thursday right here at this time um we have a workshop coming up with Tanea winder poet uh, musician motivational speaker called the heart work of writing that's for women and femmes um it's gonna be a generative workshop we're gonna um really do some self-work to to get to some really quality writing out of that. I'm personally really excited about it because Tanea Winder is so talented and so generous and like talented as a writer, but also talented as a teacher, which are two different and very important things. Um, we're going to be having a flash fiction workshop coming up. We're going to be having a translation workshop coming up. Um, we have a lot of good things that I uh, also can't start divulging yet. Um, because they're still in the works, but I do encourage you, of course, to um, stay tuned because a lot of good stuff. Um, I already said we're going to have Brian Kranz, we're going to have Philip Sturt, we're going to have Chuy Renteria on in the next month. We're also going to have uh, Wes Kransky. Kransky. I did not double check the pronunciation before I said it just now. Um, he's a local children's writer. It's it's all good. It's um, it's all good. We're going to have a lot of great stuff coming up here on Write More Light and at the Writing Center. Um, as always, we want to, um, you know, engage with you, encourage you, um, help make generative writing happen. So um, with that, I, of course, want you to write more light into your life. Um, for today's five minute prompt, and I said it was dependent upon how much battery my computer has, it doesn't. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off for this one again. My apologies, everyone. I know that you really wanted to watch my ponytail bob up and down while I write. Um, today's prompt, I want you to write about a physical location where you are. It doesn't have to be the chair you're sitting in, um, but the town or the neighborhood or the chair um and that could be of course fiction that could be poetry um pick up the details think about what makes this location different from another location um of course you can journal um you can think about you know um how you painted the walls or um what what the walls used to be um how it differs from the place where you grew up or it is the exact same place you grew up whatever it is um i hope it's generative and i hope that it assists you in writing more light into your life see y'all next week